Well, they called it Decision 97 in Knoxville. Peyton Manning coming back for his senior season, and the Vol fans couldn't be happier. Peyton, they hope his arm takes him to the national championship, and they also would like to see Manning win the Heisman Trophy. So what they do is they send neat things like this, a little poster and also a notepad to people like me, so we vote Peyton Manning for Heisman Trophy. Well, don't tell the, the folks in Tennessee, Tennessee but I don't have a vote for the Heisman, but thanks for the notepad anyway. We would have an opportunity tonight to produce your own sportscast. So here's I got the two yes, no, and I'll let you two guys produce the sportscast. So should I show the Braves highlights? No, no, no. Uh, no? All right, director, no. throw those Braves highlights away. Let's go PGA Championship. The sports tonight. So guys, should we show the Arkansas Bull Racing? Yes, Terry says yes, Bob says no. I forget. All right, let's go back to the real stuff now. Last year, the Delta Devil... And welcome back to the show. You know, I only wear this twice, this tie, twice a year. It's Super Bowl, of course, and then the opening day of the football season. Kind of ugly, don't you think? Voted the ugliest tie by my so-called friends in the newsroom. <laughs> I don't think it's too ugly, but uh, might be a little tacky. That may be the question. We'll tuck that away. And hey, it's opening day of the National Football League. Well, you remember the old Tonight Show with Johnny Carson? He used to do this skit called The Great Karnak. Well, I thought I would try it tonight. So, Sharice or Jay, you're going to have to play like Ed McMahon with that laugh. I don't have the hat, so minus the hat. But let me think here what this is. Uh, let me think. Who is the number one ranked team this year for the New Center 15 Sports Top 15? Let me get the answer. Someone's got to laugh like Ed McMahon real quick. There we go. Let me get the, uh, very quickly, this is taking too long, just like Johnny's, Johnny's skits used to do. You get that well feel. Well, yes, we do. Let's see. The most asked question to the New Center 15 sports staff. That's the answer. Good, good attempt on the left. Well, if you want to find out who the number one team is, we'll reveal it on Thursday night. Tune in at 10 o'clock. Now let's take a look at the poll. And welcome back to New Center 15 at 10. I've been joking the last few weeks about Mike Dickin. If he regrets coming back to the sidelines as a coach, well, after today, I think it's no longer a joke but a fact. The Saints turning over the ball eight times today. Coach Dicka wants to pull his hair out. I don't know how he has his hair still in his head. What a frustrating day for him. There's Jerry Rice for Mississippi Valley State star. A tear in his eye before the game starts. Of course, he's injured for the first time in a long time. It was all Niners today. Steve Young goes to Brent Jones for the touchdown. Eight turnovers as I said before, Rod Woodson had a career high three interceptions. He sure threw three interceptions. He was benched for Danny Warfel. He threw three interceptions. Your final 49ers 33, the Saints 7. Coach Dicka, I don't know how he didn't just pull out his hair today. Week three of the National Football League and week one of the newest feature on the Sunday Night Sports. The two minute warning. It's sure to be the fastest two minutes in TV sports history. Well, all right. I don't know about that, but it took me three weeks to come up with the idea. So we start the warning in green Bay at Lambeau Field. Down passes as Green Bay. That'll do it for week number three of the NFL and week number one of the brand new two minute warning on XVT. All right, one game tonight tied 24 24 between the uh, Patriots and the New York Jets. That's a big game for Coach Parcells coaching against his old team. Well, it was an interesting day yesterday in college football. A lot of fans saying today, what if, if this, if that, maybe we could have won. Let's rewind back for this week's edition of College Football Rewind. For this week's edition of College Football Rewind, join us again next Sunday when we let you know how your college is done. This week for the colleges, uh, Alabama A&M is at Mississippi Valley State, their first home game of the season. Mississippi Delta Community College, they are 2-0 on the year. They're at home. They take on Gulf Coast on Thursday night. DSU has the week off. Old Miss the week off. Mississippi State the week off. They're all in action next week. Old Miss has their homecoming game in two weeks against Vandy, and Mississippi State's home against South Carolina. DSU takes on Central Arkansas in two weeks. Well, in baseball, Randy Johnson has nights where he just truly dominates batters. In basketball, Michael Jordan seems to be in control every time he's on the court. In NASCAR, without question, there is one man that dominates the sport right now. His name is Jeff Gordon. CTM 300 in New Hampshire today. Gordon held off Irvin by less than two car lengths. Picks up his 10th win of the season and his 29th in his career. Jeff Gordon is just too good. Well, we all watch the Emmys tonight right here on the network that welcomes you home. Of course, it's CBS. So, in tradition of the Emmys, I thought we'd have a special Emmys edition of the good, the bad, and the ugly. All right, we start things off. As you know, all kinds of folks are out for the Emmys as you watch tonight on CBS. Some very famous people in the crowd. 
Yvette Mittler was there. We'll see her in just a little bit. There she is. Also, Jerry Seinfeld in the crowd tonight at the Emmys. Kelsey Grammer, a very fine-looking young lady. Now the people that are at the uh, in my audience for the Good, the Bad, the Ugly. <laughs> Here's some guys painted all up for the occasion. Very nice fellas. We have people that lay down in beds for the Emmys, and now they're Santa Claus. The Emmys didn't have that tonight. We have that. The nominees for Outstanding Supporting Actor in a Drama Series are... And that goes to Elvis Gerbach, getting the game winner on Monday night to beat the Oakland Raiders in a tremendous Monday night football game. Now, Jay and Sharice, you can jump in as we have our nominees for the play of the week. Rusty Gear, nice catch in left field. That's play number one. What do you think? Play number two, Mark McGuire hits his 50th home run of the season. It's the second year in a row that he's done it. He hit 51 today in a 10-4 win over the Padres. And our final nominee, number three, is... Coming up shortly, Ellis Burke of Colorado, as we're running out of time since the Emmys did tonight. And there's the catch by Ellis Burke. Watch the juggler. What a beautiful opportunity to catch. So there you have the three nominees for our very own Good, the Bad, and the Ugly. And the Emmy goes to... So what do you think? Here's the uh, our very own Good, the Bad, the Ugly oh, the Emmy. That's very this is nice. important. We need to think so about it. So what do you think? You got one, two, or three. So I think it's going to be unanimous. Okay. Mark McGuire. Right? Mark, Mark McGuire sounds McGuire. good. Okay. Mark, he's a big hitter. All right. We'll send this to Mark. We'll, we'll wrap this oh, up. So he him. wins. He wins. Right. Mark McGuire is our winner. 51 home runs on the season. He wins the Good, the Bad, the Ugly <laughs> Emmys. What, it, what an honor, I tell you. What a beautiful <laughs> Thank, Thank you, Phil. <laughs> Well, if you have not been to an old Miss or Mississippi State football home game yet this year, you're in for a little bit of a treat, or should I say, a big screen. Mississippi State's Kevin Prentice, who scored two touchdowns Saturday, is not the only one to make Bulldog supporters go crazy in the stands at Scott Field. Meet Mark Ralph, armed with a camera, headset, and gloves. He's Jumbotron Man, able to make any Bulldog fan go crazy in the stands at any time. You know, sometimes, you know, maybe they'll be sitting down or something, maybe if we're, even if we're not winning, they'll be sitting down, but then, you know, like last week, if I put them up on the screen or if they get up on the screen then they're all of a sudden up and they're happy and they're jumping around you know because they're excited. Mississippi State and Old Miss are the only two SEC schools to have the new multi-million dollar Sony Jumbotron. Now the excitement of coming to a Mississippi State football game is even more exciting because when you're in the crowd you never know when your smile just might appear up on the brand new Jumbotron. Yes, we love it. Every day, every day we're like, we've got to get on the Jumbotron. We're, we love it. Then I go up into the stands and I'm, I'm looking for something interesting. I don't want to just throw a, you know, a Billy Joe six pack or something up on the screen, and because that's not interesting. Uh, everybody else sitting in the stands when they look at the Jumbotron, they want to see something interesting. What do you think about being on TV? Okay, well, maybe not everyone thinks being on Jumbotron is such a big deal. And ready to? Stay with that mark and dissolve to. The head coach of the Jumbotron team is the director, Benny Ashford. He's in a small dark room at the corner of the end zone, calling all the shots. And, and off the field, the people that I've talked to, everybody seems to like they really enjoy it. They really appreciate it. And it's kind of almost like coming to the game, but at the same time, you get to watch it on TV. You certainly do. And there is Jumbotron Man, Mississippi State's very own Jumbotron Man. You never yeah. know when you're going to, if you're at the game this mm -hmm. year, and you never know when you just might appear up on that big board for everyone to see. I know. What a great job. Best job in the house yeah. right on oh. Saturdays. What do you say? For he sure. doesn't want to get the uh, Joe Six Pack guy up No, there? he doesn't. He's <laughs> looking for something unique, something a little different, and uh, that's what he's looking for. But he has a game uh, this Saturday. They take on LSU, a night mm -hmm. game, so a chance to get some crazy shots of some of the crazy characters that come out for the uh, Mississippi State night game. All right. For the Tennessee Walkers, the school board reads home, but in reality, the Big South team is homeless. See, the Walkers starred in LaGrange, Georgia, then changed sites to Tallahoma, Tennessee. Because of financial troubles, it looked as if the sun was going to set on the existence of the Walkers in the Big South League. However, the Greensville Bluesman management stepped in and in a way adopted the Walkers. But there's still some problems, like where will the team sleep and eat? In Meridian, they stayed on a gym floor. 
the people were nice enough to uh, you know set us up with cots and um, give us pillows and towels and, and blankets and bedding and uh, they fed us uh, you know three squares a day so the people in Meridian really took care of us. The Walkers may be the only homeless professional baseball team in America, but they find a way to look past that and see the benefits of what it really means to play the game. Well, we don't quit, and uh, the good thing about it is I think it's bonded our team together and made us stronger, and it's helped us play better here in the Sega half. You may say to yourself, why not quit? It's not worth it. Frankly, quit is not in the vocabulary of the Young Walkers players. They're too busy chasing down a dream. You love the game, and there, there was no time where I thought I'd ever leave or ever uh, ever give up because, I mean, they're going to have to kick me out of the stadium before I go, I'll be honest with you. To be thrown out of a stadium with only a handful of fans in the crowd, and while you're out there playing the game on the field, going through your mind is, where am I going to sleep tonight? I guess there's only really one reason why the Tennessee Walkers play the game. You know, hey, it's all about love of the game now, isn't it? And I just kind of looked at him and I said, yeah, you know, Kiwi it sure is. So uh, it came down to whether or not you love the game, and I believe we all love the game and we all really stuck it out for that simple fact and reason show that, uh, you know, in professional baseball, it's not always about money. You know, guys do love the game. Even these big leaguers love the game, even though they don't show it sometimes. So uh, it came down to that, and uh, we looked in our hearts, you know, and just found the, the will to play. You know, it comes a time when the love of the game just takes over, and you just, you know, make best out of what you got. And that's what we've done is just, you know, we all love to play. We all want to get seen. We all want to move up to an organization, and this is the way to do it. You know, I don't want to go work at Kmart or Walmart or get a real job. You know, this is, uh, you know, you to be seen. The future seemed very unclear for the Tennessee Walkers at one time, but now with the help of the Bluesmen and other teams in the Big South League, the Walkers' future looks brighter and clearer every minute. Phil Shaner, New Center 15 Sports.